question is, in your opinion, what are the key skills and competencies that leaders should possess to create a thriving organizational culture? Well, I, I, you know, I heard it once said is that God gave you two ears and one mouth and they should be used in roughly that proportion. And it's, uh, you know, listening is more important than, than, uh, um, talking and I've I've worked with some people in the past. I, I worked with one guy, an engineer. <laughs> I, I worked with that. I joined his company for a number of years, and it's just like he loved to hear himself talk, you know, <laughs> and and just talk, 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 and nobody could fit a word in edgewise. And as a consequence, you know, you don't know what's going on. You know, you you need to spend more time listening than than you do talking, and and. Uh, uh, that, that is really an important skill. And, and it's a lot harder than you really think, because we want to get our, we want to get our two cents worth in and we want to show that we know what we're talking about and stuff like that. But, but a lot of times I found with clients <clears throat> is that if you listen and you, you say just enough to keep the conversation going, they will tell you exactly what they need, what their problems are and give you a hint at which direction the solutions need to go in order to satisfy what they need. And that then becomes the basis for your solution. And subconsciously then, they're liking the solution you're presenting them because they've actually already articulated in their words to you, you know, what they're looking for. And that is something that a lot of people that are in marketing and sales especially do not do. They want to tell you all about their great solution and just beat you over the head with it. And, you know, we are not selling, you know, for the most part, we're not selling used cars, folks. You know, we're, we're, you know, if we're in the professional services business, like, like I am, then you really want to listen to what your clients need and, and find out what their points of pain are. And, and then, you know, get the hint on what solution they're looking for that puts you on the right path. And, and that's really the basis for, for the solution that's going to work for them instead of giving, giving them your one size fits all solution. It's, we don't live in a one size fits all world. And so you need to adapt to your client. And the only way you can do that is, is by listening. So I think that's a huge skill that, that most people, it's hard for most people. <laughs> They, they want to talk a lot more than, than they listen because it's hard to just shut up and, and, and listen. It, it really is, you know. I mean, even if you know the secret, it, it's hard to shut up and listen. So, uh, I mean, because I, you know, just, it, you know, with this interview here, I, I've been on the flip side, you know, where, where I'll interview people for, for my show because uh, I do a, a YouTube show on, on hydrogeology. And, and when I interview people, my tendency is to, you know, I go back and I look at the interview and said, I talked way too much in that interview. I need to shut up, get out of the way, let them speak and listen to what they have to say, because what's the point of having them on otherwise? So, and that works, you know, when, when you're working on solutions with people, like I say, they'll give you the answers or, or they'll, they'll at least tell you what they need. And, you know, just by listening. Ask a few questions to keep the conversation directed and then listen. And, and so, so that's, that's really vital. You know, I, I put that kind of above, above everything is, is use your ears. Yeah. I, I like that. And because we know each other fairly well and we worked out or were in a lot of conversations together online, we we're both talkers. We know this and uh, what I thought was interesting when COVID happened is to learn that the the inability to stop talking or the challenge to stop talking and the ability to listen and how difficult it is to listen, it isn't just me and it's not even that I'm an exception. When you go to a networking event and you find people, I remember one specific example where it was like an addictions counselor, like literally a professional listener. And I had to interrupt and say, excuse me, please understand that there's many other people who have to go and we're running out of time. They hated me, but the host thanked me 
And I'm not doing this as somebody who's saying, well, you know, I'm a great listener. It's like, I recognize your challenge. I'm the one who has to strive to shut the heck up. Just like, so for example, in this interview, I'm using a technique I developed years ago that I still struggle to use. I literally press my lips together. It's like, I will feel my lips until they stop talking or I have something that really I have to say just now before I forget. It puts me in mind of, have you ever seen the movie Fight Club? Uh, I don't think I've ever actually seen the full movie, but I've probably seen enough video clips of it <laughs> right. that I feel like I've seen the whole movie. <laughs> right. So there's a there's a scene where Helena Bonham Carter and Edward Norton are hugging. So they're in like a, you know, I think it's like the testicular cancer trauma group. And of course, it's kind of strange to have a woman <laughs> in it. But they're basically addicted to going to these groups and they're hugging each other. And this is the reason I come here is because here people really listen. They're not just waiting for their turn to talk. And that is so true that I have never forgotten it. I couldn't agree more, and I get the challenge. I think our family, either by culture or by genetics, is a talker, but I know it's me in particular, contrasted to the rest of my family. My father was, and I am. Everybody else in the family are still talkers, but it's clear that I have that particular both affliction and power, and that's why these interviews are so good for me, is it's where... Talking is a strength, but the challenge is to not talk too much, which is what I'm trying to do with this interview for the most part. So I'm going to stop after asking you the next question. So 